We will going to implement push notification in Angular and we will use web push in Node.js. So let's start the video. Hi everyone, this is Subrat and you are watching Fun of Heuristics. So on this channel, you will get to know about the programming languages, the framework and all about the algorithm. So please consider subscribing and hit the bell icon if you haven't yet. So first, we will discuss about how the push notification or the web push work. So there are some, some steps or there are some protocol that we will going to see now. Suppose this is your server and it's the cloud and you have three different clients. This is a laptop, this is a phone and you, you have some other devices like a tablet or, or something. And think like that is some virtual uh, wall kind of thing which is our push notification server. And in this case we are using web push. To send a push notification to a particular device, you need a some kind of identifier for the device. So that's a common case. So suppose you want to send a message to your friend through WhatsApp. Now the unique identifier for you is the phone number. So that is something unique that's so that you can send a message to your friend. So here you, you need some unique identifier and that's what is called a client endpoint and it is generated by the service worker. So each registration of the service worker on the client machine that will be a new public uh, or client endpoint key generated by the service worker. If the client, if your client going to unregister the service worker, what I want to say is, if your user go manually to the application tab and unregister the service worker, then your client endpoint will be different. And you have various uh, endpoint for different different uh, client. And you need this X Y Z value in your server so that you can send a particular notification to a particular uh, client. You just need the endpoint of this X. So I, I, I will use the client endpoint of the X and I will pass the details to the web push that is our uh, virtual wall. And this in turn will send the notification to the client or to the machine. And then the notification will pop up and that's how it works. We're going to see all this on the code. So for that, there is a protocol we need to follow. Like the HTTP protocol, it's using REST APIs. We have a web push protocol, which we are we will going to use in our push notification. So for this, so for that protocol, we need three value. One I just explained to you that is uh, the client endpoint. That is the endpoint where, where you need to hit like the URL in your REST call. And you need two keys. One is auth key and one is two, two P256DH. By using these two keys and your endpoint, you can send a push notification to your client. So we'll see that. Before that, I want to show you something and I think it's pretty cool. So if I'll go to the site, you can see that uh, the site is progressivewebapps.store and which is literally is a play store or an app store for your progressive web app. After knowing all the concepts, the Angular PWA, the SW update, the notification, the background sync, I know you will going to develop a cool app or bunch of cool app which will be useful for a lot of users so that you need a place to publicize it because you can't put it on the app store or can't put it on the uh, play store. So this is the place for you. And thankfully they have sponsored this video like the Pogacy web app the store they have sponsoring this video so I, I got some details I talked with him and got some details that they have already 40,000 plus installs in from their apps and they have pretty cool uh, system also and it's free of course obviously they are not going to charge you anything so you can go to the uh, your profile and you can add a new app so you can give a name and you just give your link of your uh, progressive web app they will going to download the your icon and all but if you want you can put an icon as well and just uh, give the description and you have some category so you can put that here and you can put some screenshot then you can submit your application and now here you will ask me okay Subrat I can put any link so it's not that how they are doing so what after you submit you can check here we have some process like pending denied and approved that means when you submit a link which is a PWA application they are going to check the lighthouse score from the chrome so if i will try to show you here if you go to the audit tab 
in your developer tools then you can see the lighthouse in which and it's pretty pretty useful so what they are doing is they are checking your app through the lighthouse and if it has a PWA score and they are not checking the kind of hundred but it ha if it has a good amount of score and that is installable then it, they are knowing that it's a PWA and then only your application will be approved and it can be visible here and here you can see a lot of cool apps so you will get a lot of things here like hacker news i want to show you a pretty cool apps like that is br briefing so what the briefing will do is you can do the end-to-end -end video chart without uh, installing anything without putting sign up and all you just go just click here they will just put to put it to a name just create a link and pass the link to uh, to whom you want to have a chat what I mean to say is this this store is an initial stage and I know and you will also going to agree that PWA will be the future because to all the application smaller or bigger you need a website and if you are developing a website then you are developing a PWA so it's that easy and now it's everything is possible like the push notification that I'm, what I'm showing in the current video the background sync which will be the next video so everything is possible whatever is possible in a native app and that is the their motto of creating the progressive web, web app store so please check, check, check this out and please make some cool app and install it and spread it uh, to your friends. Now we'll see the implementation of the push notification. So let's jump into the code. Now we'll implement the backend that, that is the Node.js here. And today we will only cover the web push. I will not going to explain the MongoDB uh, and how you're going to store the data to the DB and how you're going to retrieve. And if you guys want, just le let me know in the comments so that I will make a video on that as well. So we will create a Node.js project that so I will run npm in it and we will open this in the Visual Studio code. You can see our package of JSON is empty and we need our web push module. Open the terminal here and we will run npm install web push. As you can see the web push is got installed here and the web push uses a key mechanism called rapid key and it has a private key and it has a public key the public key which will be present both in the client and in the server but the private key which you need to be secret from from the outside world that's why you will going to put it in the server to check that we have a method called generate rapid key so i will create a file that that is app.js and there we will write our code and in the package.json i have just i just added a script so here we need to import the web push so you can do this like that so just require web push which is already installed from our package.json so for now what i will do is i will just go ahead and console log uh, the public key and the private key log dot generate rapid keys okay so and it's a method so i will just run the node mon and we'll see we got our public key and the private keys so public key which is the key bit here and you don't need it to be generated every time when you make it request because you need this particular public key in the client as well which will be only be encrypted through the private key so now as we got our public key and private key now we'll go to the browser and we'll use this public key if you remember i have told you that you need a client, particular client endpoint for a particular service worker and that service worker will use your public key from where the notification is coming now we'll go to our application so here we will create a method called push subscription and inside that we will use our SW push. To use SW push what we have to do is again you know you need to inject that to your client like we did for the SW update. Here we will do the same thing that we have did in the SW update and if you haven't watched the SW update and you, if you want to know how to update your service worker and how to notify the user, then you can check this video here and it will be pretty clear on that video. 
and here we will check that our HWL post is enabled on or not that is that the service worker is enabled or not so we'll just use this dot SW push dot is enabled and it's a property from SW push and we have uh, the various property like uh, is enabled message on notification click and that all we're going to see today or we will check if it is not enabled we'll just log some value And if this is enabled, then we'll do the request subscription part. And for that, we'll do this. So we are using HW post the dot request subscription and we'll, which will use your public key that we have generated it in the, in the Node.js. So I'll just copy that key here and that I will put it as a and it should be private read only and we can use this public key here so you can go like this dot public key and if it able to subscribe to the push notification then it will come to the dot then block as it's a promise so we'll just grab the subscription object from here and for now we'll just console log uh, log the value but suppose if it's not then it will come to the catch and we'll just hit the catch and error and we'll also for now we'll just console log the value here as well and for now I will call this subscription method from on init of the application you can call and you should call this from a click of a button so uh, just use that okay whenever the user want your push notification then provide a button to click the subscribers or, or in a particular event you should call the method because whenever you go to the browser and just pop up okay you don't need a permission and that's not good and most of the people will block that one so you only ask for push notification subscription when it's required i'm calling on on init but you ask on when it's re required as the application is built and now we'll go to the dist and the, our angular application which is here and we'll start the server and this is the application we have developed in the previous video so if you can check here we got a pop-up that we have some updated file here that we just changed for by adding the push notification subscription if I will press ok we'll go to the console then you can see that you we are getting a subscription endpoint here like you have your endpoint you, you have your authentication key and it will be inside the keys and you have a p256th we need all these things on our server so in the real example instead of console logging it here you need to make a post call to the server so what i meant is when you will get the value from your request subscription and you got this object you need to send the whole object to your server in our case to our web push method and to implement that you need the express the mongoose for the mongodb and to the body parts and you need the cards and if you guys want that i can make a video just let me know in the comments so that i will make a video on the same topic like push subscription from the client to saving it in the database then fetching from the database to swing the push notification in the client so i am not doing it here because it will going to take a lot, lot of time and the video length will be longer and if you guys want that just let me know in the comment as I told you that we need that subscription so uh, what I will do I will just create a value called sub and we just copy paste that value here and if you can see here you have an endpoint we have expression time which is null for now and we use these keys as a our protocol keys now you got your endpoint you got your keys now you just need a web push dot send notification and what if it has two value like if you hover over here you can see it has uh, two things like the push notification subscription that what we got from the client for our case uh, we just copy paste it here and the payload payload means what the client need to be seen like the title of the uh, notification the image of the no notification so for now we already have the subscription object here and we will create our payload 
the SW push will only listen to a particular type of payload and that is if I will bring the tab here and you can see here the payload object need to be a type of this so I will copy this one we'll just go here now I will just paste the value here and you don't need all the thing okay you, you don't need all the value here so for that we'll remove so we need the title and the vibrate property here will be only for the phone device so it, it will say vibrate for a uh, hundred percent so vibrate for one second then vibrate for half second then here I can vibrate for hundred second means one second here and now we'll go to the data and in the data you can pass the object so it, it, it can be anything I think the data type was also any so here you will pass a URL so this is the payload and this will going to send to the SW push in angular and through the service worker and we, 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 we will use the send notification server and if you hover over it we have a payload which need to be either a string or a buffer so here what we'll do is just do the json.stringify and we'll just pass the payload and this will stringify the value and it will send the notification to the server but if you run the application now you will not send the notification because we haven't used our public key and private key or we haven't registered our public key and private key to our web push so what i will do i will just do it here so you can register your or you can set your vapid details in the web push by using set vapid details and you can give mail to just a random mail or a, or a particular mail and this is the public key and a private key which we have generated little back now if i will save this file and if i will run the application now you can see that we will get a notification okay i got the notification on the previous screen now i'm recording in my first screen so if i run the application again so so that means it will going to call this method again then you can see that we will get a push notification from the browser and to show you what I will do is go to the browser and I will just kill the whole application itself so you can see here the application is not not opened and it it is not opened in any tab and I close the browser also now if I will go and hit run the application again you will see that you got the notification that means in your PWA application if the application is closed then also you are going to get the notification through the service worker now back to the screen 2 again so we saw how the push notification is working even if the browser is closed now we will see some properties of HW update that is message and notification click you can use the message property from HW push if you want a functionality like you want to display some message on the browser itself if a notification is coming or you want to make some extra call if the browser is open and you are getting a push notification so we will just try to access the uh, message event that is called message and if you hover over it it's an observable of object here you can subscribe this one as it's observable and you will get the message it as a response and again it's from the service worker and we'll try to log the message so I will build the application the application is built so we'll go to the uh, folder go to the dist folder now I will start the uh, server at port 8000 now we'll go to the browser now I refresh the browser now if I'll go to the node.js file so when whenever we'll try to send the notification from here I'll just run the node.js here you can see that we got the notification object in the message tab and here you can see we are getting the data as the URL and the title is one of heuristic and some vibration and all so whatever the payload you sent so here you can do a lot of things like suppose you want to call some server like if the if the client browser is open and you are getting a message you want to change some like the notification number on the top of uh, top that also you can increase or decrease or you can check the count and you can do a lot of things on that so this is useful uh, when you got a message now we will see how you're gonna handle the click on the notification 
so for that we have a event called notification click so on notification click property it's and it's an observable of type action and notification that we are grabbing it here so uh, it will trigger when you click on the notification for now what we will do is we'll try to access this url and we'll try to open that one suppose you have some notification id specified for a particular notification then send that notification id as id here again make a fetch call from from the server to the notification id okay first i will write this one so what we are doing here is we are uh, doing window.open and we are accessing notification.data.url so this is the notification that we are getting here dot data dot url and as i told you about the fetch suppose you send a id from here okay so in the payload you, you have added a id in the data now you want to make a get call don't use the http client here because your service worker which only supports fetch service and if you want to make api call from here just use the fetch api and if you pass a normal url means a valid url then it will make a get call and if you want to make some other requests like you can you you can pass a method and that method can be treated as a post put delete patch and that how are you going to make a call don't use http client here so i have saved the file and built the application now we'll go to the browser and just hit a refresh so that it will be updated now i will go to the server and i will try to send a notification by running the app.js now i got the notification on the second screen when i will click on that and you will see we have a pop-up for the particular browser and if i will say okay always allow for local because the pop-up is blocked by the browser when i hit done and i will go to the file again i will try to run the file we got the notification second screen again now i clicked on that notification as we have given under dot open notification url so that's it for today guys today we saw how you can send a push notification by using web push protocol and it's pretty useful it will scale your app to like a certain level it feels like a native app you can send the latest update to the client and if you have a app like hacker hacker news or or any kind of a chat app then you can use this and there is one more topic is background sync which is also pretty useful and we are going to see that in the next video and if you are developing a pretty cool app by using all these concepts then please upload your pw app to the progressive web app dot store so that everybody can use it and it's pretty useful so that you will get some feedback you will get star rating a lot of things can be happen and again thanks progressive web app for sponsoring this video thanks a lot so please hit the like button if you are liking the video till now and please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you will not miss the background sync video and if you want to support me you can support me on the patreon i'll give the link in the description below and please share this video among your friends family colleague push notification is the pretty useful thing for every progressive web app so please share it and please give some valuable comment in the comment section below we're going to meet in the next video till that stay happy bye bye